Hey everybody, welcome to Life Hacker. Uh, with me is Adam. Hello. Duchess. Whitson. <laughs> Hi. Gordon. I'm Adam Pash. Uh, we're going to be joined by Thorin Klazowski in a bit. Uh, we've got actually a ton of news to talk about today. Um, and as always, we'll be taking questions and uh, delivering a few cool downloads that we looked at recently. So let's get started. All right, so uh, last week, uh, one of the big things that happened, or at least big in our sort of realm, uh, Windows 8 Consumer Preview. It may, be, it may actually it's seem a little bit... Actually not that big. It's, not, yeah. it's, it's, it's like one of those things where uh, now Windows is doing it, and they do a great so job. This wasn't the Consumer Preview, this was the Release Preview. Yes. The Consumer Preview was, was the, the last one. one. This is the oh. Release Preview. And... So what, so, what, so what makes this not that big of a story is that unlike, um, you, you know, we all remember when Windows 7 first came out and they had their release candidate, which was essentially the final version of Windows 7 yeah. that, you know, we all got to try out and use. The release preview, on the other hand, is not the final version of Windows 8. There are a lot of things that still aren't in the OS that we're not going to see till the final release. Um, and Microsoft has talked about some of these. We've seen, um, you know, some of the new really overhauled metro like interface on the desktop mm -hmm. and we've seen a bit of a preview of that but that's not in the release preview yet and microsoft has said that we're not going to see that until the final version of windows 8 which mm -hmm. drops probably in the fall um and, and you know a few other things like that so if you've been playing around with the uh consumer preview or the developer preview this is just kind of the next step it's a little bit more stable there are more apps in the app store um, they've added desktop apps to the App Store, sort of. And so it's a, a few little things like that, but for the most part, it isn't that different than what we've, what we've seen so far. And it is not the final version of Windows 8. My question is, are you, I remember with Windows 7, there were a lot of upgrade issues. You got, the, you got the preview or whatever, and then when it was time to get the final version, upgrading was a pain in the butt. Are they, are they fixing that with this? No. <laughs> it, oh, it, anything, it's, it's very clear. They've made it, for the most part, very clear mm -hmm. that each of these, you can't upgrade you're not going to yeah. be able to upgrade to the final version of Windows 8 from any of these, which is yeah. why I haven't really installed it as my main OS yet yeah, because I don't want to have to do another clean install yeah. on a couple. You can upgrade them from your current installation of Windows 7, but when Windows 8 comes out, you are going to either have to do a clean install or install it over a Windows 7 installation. Right? I don't get why this is difficult. Like, why is it that hard for them to do to Honestly, I'm not that sure either. Maybe you so know, they avoid... I lingering bugs or other problems i think that that i mean the, the the issue really i think is just that like you have i mean a lot goes into an operating system so you mm. end up and and these are these are by like definition like messy they're not like perfect yeah so i i imagine that there's a matter of just like how do you support something like that like well, reasonably does apple yeah with the with os 10 for the last few okay. releases it's been doing you can upgrade directly Right, right, right. Well, it could also just be a matter of the way the, like, Unix kernel works. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't really yeah. know. Um, they do have less hardware to support, so that is... But Apple also limits all of it to, like, it's developers, like, and there are too. fewer people mm -hmm. using that That's true. preview. Um, anyway, so Windows 8 still... Still chugging still away. You can still chugging. go and try it out. I... Uh, like I, I've, like, looked at it for when I needed to write about it, but I'm just... I'm kind of waiting for the final version. Yeah. I'm just... It's it's clear that they're only showing us what they want to show us right now, and I'm like, well, yeah. I don't need your, I don't want like the PR version of yeah. Windows. I kind of just want to see what Windows 8 is going to be. Um, okay, so something uh, a little bit cooler, a little bit more immediately useful. Well, not quite immediately useful, <laughs> but but <laughs> will be useful. Uh, Google Maps. Uh, Google had a, a, a Google Maps event, and uh, they announced a few different things. Many of them were not that special. The special one, though, is that uh, offline Google Maps is coming in a more like like robust form to Android, uh, which means after after a point after it's actually like fully released, uh, you will be able to say like I am going to this place. I want all of these maps offline, so that when if you have no connection but you still have GPS, you can you can navigate with it. If you don't have GPS and you're in like the subway, you can still look at maps while you're there. So awesome! Yeah, that's great. We had a caller who asked about. Yeah. offline map options last and week, last episode or two episodes no, ago. It was like, I think oh, it was, was a it a while ago? ago. I'm yeah, it was, it was Alan, Alan answered the question and had a lot of answers for it, but none this. of them were perfect. Yeah, so they nice were all pretty hackish, so this is pretty yeah. exciting, and it's making me very sad that I just switched away from Android. Yeah, well, <laughs> and on top of all of that, um, they're going to be... Uh, iOS is presumably 
going to be ditching Google Maps Yeah, yeah but let's be honest. The Maps app that has been coming with the iPhone yeah, for the past yeah, years yeah. hasn't been updated forever. I'm excited to what see them the, ditch Google because they might actually have a real navigation app now. Yeah, True. Well, but they, I mean, it's been updated. It's just been updated, like, very... I'm, yes. I'm just happy that they give you multiple routes now. Like, that was... That's that's how that's how bad it is. The that thing that, that's always you know, been really frustrating... This is, this is the one thing that's always been really frustrating about iOS with the built-in apps is that um, they only upgrade on system upgrades. Mm -hmm. So it's like Google Maps yeah. as a built-in part of the operating system sucks because it means like Google can't push updates to it at all. It's just yeah. like every every year when a new um, oh, update. I mean, I guess they can do it in point updates, but they don't really. Like yeah. they generally yeah. only update. So Google Maps is like static for a year at a time. Well, they don't update their stock apps that much anyway. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. the rumor is that iOS 6 is going to be a huge overhaul for those stock apps. The other related news to this is that Google Maps did, uh, or the, the Google did announce officially that they are going to, they're committed to bringing all of Google Maps' Android features to other platforms like iOS. Mm -hmm. So even if we see a navigation, you know, built-in navigation for iOS soon, yeah. mm -hmm. Google has said that they would like to bring, you know, the full navigation app that we have on Android to iOS yeah. and other platforms, which I would it's really love because cool. yeah. it is so good and so much better yeah. than everything that's available on iOS. So yeah, uh, so it, it would potentially be a really, it would be a boon really for users if 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 Apple does ditch Google mm. it, Google Maps in terms of like the actual Google Maps app, it will probably just get better. Yeah, yeah. because then Google can actually just release those updates whenever they want. Yeah. So uh, briefly, while we're talking about iOS, uh, another awesome thing happened last week, which was that iOS five point one point one is now officially jailbroken yeah we that was really nice that it, it th this was one of the longest waits strangely it seemed i mean i think it was it, it was a good what like three or four months yeah i still haven't updated to five one i haven't either because of i didn't want to lose my jailbreak as, as someone who got a new iphone not too long after 5.1 came out and had to wait the entire time yeah, for that jailbreak so excited. it was so stressful though you know what actually the 5.0 was forever that took a while too yeah but it wasn't, uh, like, I don't know. I don't miss the jailbreak. Like, I love having the jailbreak, but I don't miss it as much when I have to wait anymore because iOS 5 has really brought all this stuff that I've, I've noticed that, too. They're all, when I, I was so excited to jailbreak, and when I finally did, I was like, okay, I forgot why I wanted to jailbreak so bad. For and me, then, it's all about the Google Voice integration. That's, yeah, that's, that's why bit, yeah, I jailbreak. Yeah, it's that and I having tethering that. for those emergencies. I don't use the Google Voice. I don't understand why you don't use it. Because I like the Google Voice app for iPhone, and I like that it syncs that any texts well, I send on my phone will be synced back to the Google Voice app. what about, like, app. phone calls? What about them? Well, like, you, you place a phone call, you use the Google Voice app, mm -hmm. and then it does that callback thing? No. The oh, Google, no, it can call directly. No, the Google Voice app can call directly. Okay. It's really nice. It works. It works really well. Yeah, like you know, it's not as bad as you think. This is the though. this is no. the pro this is the problem with the app for me is that when you get a text message, you get a notification, and then you go into the app, yeah, and then you have to wait for it to reload to actually edit that text message. This is this is yes. This is that's the, biggest the one thing that's a problem. My favorite jailbreak tweak that I've installed so far. There are, there are a few. I like being able to swipe notifications out of the notification bar oh, and little stuff like that. that. The biggest thing for me though is being able to, with one tap navigate to a location from the Google Maps app because every you know you can click on addresses in Safari or whatever and it'll yeah. take you to the Maps app but then you can't navigate there yeah yeah. There's a jailbreak hack called navigate for maps that puts a little button it's like navigate with ways and so I can just tap that nice which is so much nicer than they're like copy the address, should, go into Ways and paste it and whatever. Install that. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite things. Because um, that's so something far. that's built into Google Maps on Android. <laughs> yeah, yes. there, well, there's just a lot of stuff that that's like that would be nice to have built into it's iOS. Little things. That, that I mean, like yeah, those are the things that the jailbreak's worth it for. But then yesterday, I actually discovered this thing called App Locker, which has been around forever, um, where you can where you can tap and hold to lock apps mm -hmm. if you want to keep like a certain app private or whatever. And that oh yeah 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 that oh, was really cool that was very cool. And it, you can even have it lock on certain Wi-Fi networks and then not on others. Oh, that's way cool. And so that's it's like if you don't want to nice. enter your password at home. Yeah. And I mean, it does way, way more than that. It's like a buck. There, there are a lot of really cool things that make it exciting. And then we have our always up-to-date guide on the screen. And the most, and the, the greatest thing mm. about the newest jailbreak is that it's so easy. You don't have to yeah. put your phone into DFU mode or oh, any yeah, of that crap. You literally plug it in and press jailbreak and you're done. Yeah, mm. yeah. Green Poison, Absinthe, whatever is the... that, that I, I, I appreciate Red Snow, but the green poison absent yeah. thing is it's just much made easier to do. so easy yeah um i just have one more thing to say quickly about google maps that i was just thinking of <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
I think actually it's kind of exciting that Apple is rebuilding the maps because like I feel like Google Maps is great. I love Google Maps. I use it a ton and Google uh, Maps Nav on Android is mm-hmm. great. It was my favorite thing about Android. Um but it it'll be interesting for like Apple to actually take like a vested attempt at like making a good maps thing and maybe it'll be better even here's i mean mm. best case scenario it's better and yeah. worst case scenario i install something in my jailbreak phone that makes google maps my default when mm-hmm. like app or when google releases it straight through the app store like yeah. he, here's here's the one reason i don't think that that will happen um and this is google maps has just been around for so long that it has all these really great features and so I take so for a while ago I started using Bing Maps on the desktop because Google Maps was just slow and it was always like causing problems mm-hmm. for me. And not too long after that, Google released that amazing feature where it can tell you how long a route will take in current traffic. Yeah. And that is just like that's something that no one else has that Google is just excelling at things like that. And Google's traffic estimates are so good and I don't know if Apple's going to be able to match that right out of the gate because Google Maps has been around for so long and so many people are using it. Yeah, the traffic thing and they get that sourced from people using the yeah. Maps app. So so it, it, it may be good. I'm I'm just a little maybe a little bit more skeptical but, than you are because but, but, Google Maps well, has come so far. But this is the thing. If Apple has their own Maps app and that's Everyone the will default, be using it. it's automatically going to have a ton of people using that's, it. Yeah. That's a so, very good point. There you go. We'll, we'll, find we'll out. see what happens. We'll find out uh, probably technically before this podcast is online because the, oh, they're going to have yeah. the WWDC yeah. event. It happens about the same time this is going up. Well, well, well. Keep your <laughs> eyes open. Yeah. Um, okay, Facebook app auto-sharing gets maybe slightly a tiny yeah. bit better. So this was a Facebook stupid piece of news for the week. Um, a lot of you have probably seen some of these apps on Facebook, uh, these uh, frictionless sharing, they call them, things like uh, Social Cam or even like the Washington Post Social Reader. Essentially, you install one of these apps, and then anytime you watch a video on Social Cam, it's automatically posted to your newsfeed for all your friends to see. And then if they go to watch the video, it prompts them to install the app, and then every video they watch is. It's actually kind of like. What Spotify I don't want to say when, it's like a virus, but it's kind of like a virus yeah. in the way that it spreads between all your friends. And a lot of people don't really realize what's going on when they do this. So then all of a sudden they're watching all these videos, they're getting posted to your newsfeed, and people are embarrassed about what they're watching or reading, and they don't know what's going on. Facebook um, basically made a new rule for developers saying that um, these frictionless sharing apps can only publish to your newsfeed if you've looked at something for 10 seconds or more. Which is kind of weird. It's the stupidest rule that isn't going to change anything okay, ever. Okay, good point. And so the point of the, the reason that I wrote about this news, because it wasn't really big news, the reason I wrote about this was basically a reminder to say, watch what you install on Facebook. Yeah. Facebook apps, for the most part, are stupid, and they're going to spam your friends. But you or know what? You- you you know you say that it being almost like a like a virus or something like mm-hmm. that which is 100% true yeah. but actually i don't know if you i don't know if you guys saw this or not but there was um i was looking at uh, like a week two weeks ago at like um like a graph of the user bases of these apps like social cam mm-hmm. and it was like just escalating oh, phenomenally absolutely. and then crashed because like people just like people Realized. caught on, got really annoyed, and everyone was just on mass like yes. getting rid of them. So yeah, be so, careful well, if you click on something and ask you to install an app. I wouldn't recommend installing it. Or if you install it, immediately go into the permissions and and yeah. take away all of its permissions you that should, you can. People should be auditing their apps like on a monthly Regularly. basis because I, I mean I pay pretty close attention. I don't I don't sign up for much. I don't approve apps. Yeah, there are still things in my apps that I, in my app settings that I'm like, where did this come from? I have no idea what this I'm is. I'm always shocked. I'm like I'm like wait, I don't remember. Like I remember doing this months ago, sort yeah. of. But like, is this still been posting and stuff? Like, the where virus this analogy was kind of crazy about that. Is like there aren't actually viruses it's facebook created a platform in which developers can legitimately put stuff that is basically as bad as a virus yeah, on there. it's a bummer so it, it's and if you really <laughs> ridiculous if you haven't audited your apps in a while we do have an always up-to-date facebook privacy guide which you should definitely check out it's the complete guide to locking down your facebook yep do it all right, and one last quick thing. Thorin uh, is going to join us and tell us a little bit about uh, some password depressing breaches. password yeah. breaches of last week. Thorin? Hey, guys. So, LinkedIn. Uh, basically, last Wednesday, about 6.5 million passwords for LinkedIn and eHarmony were leaked out through a Russian hacker site. And the next day, on Thursday, 
it was revealed that Last.fm had had a bunch of users' accounts hacked as well. Um, you know, basic rule of thumb here, step one, go through and change your password. Step two, go through and change your password on every other site that you have that's linked to the same email account. And step three, if you haven't done so already, start considering using an option like LastPass, KeyPass, or 1Password that can make it so when these types of things happen, you don't have to go through and change everything everywhere and just makes everything a lot easier. Um, and obviously, if you haven't done so already, immediately go into your LinkedIn account, change your password. You can check to make, see if it was one of the ones that was hacked, but it's probably about time to change your password anyway, so it's always a good idea. Thanks! Alright, our first question comes from a caller. Hey, the hacker, what's up? Uh, it's Blake from Orlando. I just had to go through the process of reinstalling my Windows, which happens a couple of times a year for me, and it's really a pain in the butt. Uh, I'm looking to see if there's a solution for being able to quickly reinstall all of my programs, not just programs uh, supported by something like Ninite, which is awesome, but uh, any program that I want, uh, and something that's not just fully imaging the hard drive, because that keeps all the crap on it. Thanks, you guys are awesome. Okay. So... The uh, we have written about this once, sort of. There is um, a great tool out there for Windows Seven called RT Seven Lite, and it's spelled in absolutely horrible, unsearchable way. So you will have to go to the show notes to find a link for this. But what's really cool about it is that it lets you take your Windows installation disk and pull out features of Windows that you don't want, and like tweak certain things. And one of the cool features it has is that it lets you take uh, those MSI files and add them to the Windows installation. So you can take pretty much almost any program that you want to install and add it to the Windows installation. So when you install Windows, all of those programs are already there. So it's kind of like Ninite, only it's a lot more complicated to set up. Um, whether that's worth it or not is kind of up to you and the apps you use and how much, you know, you kind of need to research the command line flags for each MSI file to get it running in the background or else it won't work correctly. Um, but it is really cool and it's it's cool and it, you know even if you can get some of your apps installed that way and not all of them, it's still going to be a faster way to install your apps when you reinstall Windows. Yeah. So that's an option. It's funny. I, I was looking. I, in the past, I think pre Ninite, there were like some crazy ways to accomplish this. I don't remember them. I'm, I doubt they're kind of up to date. I think Ninite yeah. has probably like superseded most things and everyone's like, this is kind of what I wanted anyway. I'm um, sure there are like other things out there, but they just... Yeah, I mean, one thing that I do, this is not this is not like a, a, an awesome scripted taken care of way, but like one thing that I do is like with, with apps that... Um, with apps like you're talking about that you can't uh, install a bulk install with Ninite is like I'll take the I'll take the installers of those apps and I'll I'll make a file or a folder where I just like keep all of those so yeah. like um so like I'll put like you know Adobe programs like mm. they're all in there like I put mm. things that that you can't sort of bulk install in, at least in one location that can easily be taken to a new drive and a new OS and like it's still a pain but you it, they're all organized all, it's a lot it's quick if it's all in a network drive it's like here's another thing you can do if you install windows re like reinstall windows regularly switch to portable apps yeah. for those apps that you use they'll all be up to date and they're all they're just contained in one folder on your hard drive and you'll also have all of your settings saved the portable apps is a really so good so when idea. you go to reinstall yeah. windows you can just drag your entire folder of portable apps over all your settings will be the same you'll be as up to date as you were before it's so easy to do it's not even funny why are not why are apps not just portable i mean i can understand having I, settings not stored in the app but why not have they since, why, why not just make the apps sometimes the they can just, sometimes they can tend to be a little bit slower oh really yeah or you know others it's really honestly at this point i think they should be portable yeah, yeah. just uh, settings aside there's no re I, I don't see any reason for them not to be portable. Why they have to like dig into the, their claws into the system? I think it's mostly that's just, like that's sort of a, esoteric. Mm -hmm. Like um, that's more just like, kind of the, one of the downsides of the way, way Windows works. The way it uses like the registry instead of like these individual well, settings that, files yeah. and stuff like that. It's just kind of the way Windows is. In Windows all isn't. It's, it's not the. They don't go follow the Unix way. Nope. Unfortunately, um, for some people, not most. Most people don't care. Okay. Uh, next question. Another caller. 
Hey, Life Hacker, this is Nicholas, and I had a quick question. Um, I was wondering if there's any way to completely wipe a computer of all settings but still have the operating system uh, on the computer as well. So, in other words, like I have a computer that has uh, a bunch of settings and files and stuff, and I, I don't need any of the files. I just. Oh, we lost yeah. him. Sometimes Got our, cut off at the end. Sometimes our voicemails get cut off at like 19 seconds for some reason. Huh. Google Voice. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions. We're going to assume that by files, he also means apps. He doesn't need to keep the apps because that's a consideration. Um, so basically, you don't want to reinstall an operating system, but you want to like a fresh start. Right? Is that how you guys understood? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So let's talk about that. Did he say it was Windows? I'm not sure. Uh, he didn't. So we can we we'll talk, talk about, about this both. for both Windows yeah. and OS X. Well, OS X is really easy. OS X here. So I'll yeah. talk about Windows very briefly because okay. we already, we just talked about reinstalling all your favorite apps. Mm -hmm. So that's, whether you want to keep the apps or not, you can do that. There's... From what I can, there's no easy way to just wipe the settings on your machine. There will be a Windows reset feature in Windows 8, but that is not out yet. So if we're talking Windows 7, I gotta tell you, it's gonna be easier to just reinstall Windows, especially if you use one of the methods we just mentioned, whether it be Ninite, whether it be RT7 Lite, or whether it be using portable apps, it's gonna be easier to just reinstall Windows from scratch, get all your apps back, and move on with your day. Because clearing out the settings, you have to do it all manually, and it's gonna take you forever. Um, so the Windows re the reset feature in Windows 8, it's basically like, click it, vanilla. Yep. Everything goes back to the beginning. Yep. Which is, With that's way one, cool. It's super yeah. cool. I'm does pretty it, excited about it. Does, will it. does that also mean like um, apps and stuff you've installed? Oh, I just thought of something. Couldn't you, couldn't you like <laughs> save like a, a, a they're, 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 S system restore point? Yeah, restore point. In yeah, theory, theory but then you'd have to still, you still have to re-download all those Windows updates. Couldn't you? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's a good. That's a good point. Like, and any you, apps you you've installed since then, it's it's possible. Windows has a really good, like really good. It used to suck. It's really it's good, good now. now. Like system restore utility that basically you can save a restore point and roll everything back to it. So if you have a restore point from like your vanilla installation, you mm -hmm. could just pop back to that at any time. Which is good because if you're trying to clear like a specific like a few settings that you don't really know when you tweaked or where they are, that could help you get back to maybe a previous point where those settings weren't a problem. It's mm. funny the way that technology works though, because I feel like uh, there was a time when system restore sucked when I needed to use it a lot. Yeah. And now it's great and you don't ever I've never need to use used it, it. <laughs> <laughs> which is just sort of like, I, don't know, I guess it's the way things roll. But um, I would kill to have had, I would have killed to have had what, it is now. Yeah, back back when in you used like it. The late nineties. <laughs> anyway, OS uh, ten. So, yeah, oh, OS ten. Yeah. Um, well, OS ten, you can basically just create a new user and log in an admin user and log in as that admin user and then delete the old one and then your settings are wiped out. Uh, your user settings. If you want to get rid of the applications, throw them away. If you want to get rid of um, the, like some of this user files that are not that are not specific to you, but to like yeah. everyone on the computer. Um, you kind of you either have to do that manually or use something like App Cleaner or Onyx to O N Y X um, to um, to like actually clean up some of those system files. But it doesn't take very long. It's a lot easier than it's a lot doing easier it than manually. Windows. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, pre Windows Eight, that is pre Windows yeah. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, good. See, I don't know why everyone's so like everyone's so anti Windows Eight because things like this. Are going to be awesome. I don't. I don't even. It yeah. seems like a. Like, I'm not. Can we just get over the Metro interface and realize that there's still some really cool features in Windows 8? Please? I mean, it's still going to be Windows. I don't. Everyone <laughs> likes to get up in arms about things. It's going to be Windows. It's going to be the Windows. It's going to be same as Windows 7. It's I don't like, think it's going to be a Vista situation. It's, it's like a Facebook have, petition. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to have a Metro <laughs> UI exactly that like. you can discard and never look at again if you don't want to. Yeah. Like what? I not know. not not out of the box, but anyone who's watching this podcast knows how to download a registry and get rid of that metro interface. It's going to take you two seconds. We'll have to, we'll have to do a special highlight yeah. on release day. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Our next question comes from uh, ZTK Gabriel via Twitter, who says, when buying an SSD, does brand name matter? What specs should I look out for when comparing? 
So uh, I guess we'll chalk this up to the 80th consecutive Life Hacker show where we've talked about <laughs> SSDs. Well, we decided, there's a reason, guys. We decided we we're going to talk about hard drives too. Okay, let's roll. Because because the, there's there's brand considerations there also, and spec considerations. I mean, I probably said a million times that like OCC is the way I go with SSDs, and that's what I've recommended for everyone since I don't know ever, and they've always been good. I, I no, I can't remember if I had a failure ever, but it was. I, I mean, like I have I have like three of them, and they're they're great, and they've always been good. They've been fast. They've been reliable, and so I've stuck with those and i used to have a corsair which was good too it's just more expensive yeah mm-hmm. corsairs mm-hmm. corsairs always make good one int i have an intel one and mm-hmm. intel ones are notably very very reliable mm-hmm. though they can tend to be a little bit slower mm-hmm. um oh, i thought so, they were quick i thought they were supposed to be really fast i was the only person that they were very reliable maybe maybe this is old the, intel this drives is, yeah this is like so this is where day. you get into spec categories where it's very mm-hmm. easy to just you know go on newegg or a site like that and start looking at specs with SSDs, the specs are very easy to look at. You just look at how fast it can read and write data. Yeah, some of it, and really for the most part, the read speeds are always awesome. Yeah, but the write it's speeds the writing are speeds the that are going to vary a little bit. More. And so that's really, I think, what's worth looking at and seeing how they write uh, and seeing the performance between like small blocks of data and large blocks of data because mm-hmm. hard drives can handle large blocks of data really well too. It's this, it's little things that you may also want to look at whether your computer supports SATA 6 gigabit per second or whether it only supports SATA 3 gigabit per second. There's no reason in dropping a ton of money on this super insane fast SSD if you're only going to get SATA 3 gigabit per second speeds out of it unless you, know, yeah, you want to kind of future proof that and, and you plan on upgrading soon to something that to a computer that does have SATA 6 gigabit per second. Um, okay, I'm going to offer some two cents now from a it. very different perspective uh, about hard drives, which is basically that there was a time uh, there was a time in which I paid attention to um, specs and things that people would write about, like these hard drives are good in this way and these suck and like whatever, all that stuff. S- still remains true, I'm sure. However, um, hard drives will fail. I mean, yeah. honestly, I've had one. Most, most of the time, they don't. Or, or not most of the time. They often don't. Like, you, will, you could go your whole life and never have a hard drive fail. You mm. probably won't. Yeah. It probably, one will probably fail at one point, if not many of them. So when it comes to, I still, like, if I buy a new drive on Newegg or something, I still, you know, like, I look at user reviews. That's all yeah. I care about. I don't, I don't even look at specs. It's like, well, except for, obviously, like, those sort of important details. But, like, read-write times when it's, like, an SSD, I don't, I'm not going to We're at the really point where look. it's so fast that, but, like... So oh, I th- it does matter. matter with some of them. There are some that are that are like budget ones but that that's are cheap the thing. and they have bad those, controllers. Those would have bad reviews. I'm just gonna I'm gonna assume that they're not we're gonna reaching like, for yeah, the sky. True. We're buying the Corsair, the OCZs, the Intels. The, I think it's like the the thing is like some of the good drives that I've used though have had and even good drives that are are fast or whatever. It's like three to three and a half stars generally tend to mean that it works. Yeah, and that's a safe bet if it's below yeah. that. Yeah, that's when it, that's yeah. when, when work. good drives so, go bad. So, so my point though is that you can you can agonize over the drive you get, but the ma- I stopped caring so much about like I used to be like oh I don't I want to get the one with the least chance of failing, yeah. but a lot of times you have to like pay like a decent amount more for that, right? I mean, not like sometimes, yeah. right? Now I just am like whatever. Maybe this failed for someone. It doesn't bother me because I'm just going to be backing up constantly anyway. And that's the yeah. worst case scenario. Back up the machine, guys. <laughs> worst case scenario, it dies. I'm not saying go out and buy like the crappiest drive you can find that's like three dollars on Newegg for like a hundred gigabytes or something. I'm saying like still go for quality, but don't agonize quite so much over like specs or like yeah. Or like those sorts of like um, statistical like drive mm. failure things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like when I, I, I don't know, I, it, brand has had something to do with it for me for a while. I like I used to rely on Seagate, and Seagate drives worked really well. And then they bought Mac Store, and then Mac Store, it's like Mac Store was always they had one of the <laughs> highest failure rates of anybody. So bad. And it's like as soon as Seagate bought Mac Store, Seagate started to suck. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what that what that was about. And I just the thing is, I was like, oh, this is stupid. This is and I I started buying Western Digital drives, which had a bad track record for a yeah. while and I've gotten a lot better um, but I, I started buying those instead and then there was a deal on Seagates and I'm like okay I'm being stupid about the brand thing 
And then I bought, so I bought four Seagate drives, which lasted me about six months, and three of them died. <laughs> so, I just buy Samsung. My Samsung drives have been awesome. I heard they were loud, though. Whatever, you're that's loud. That's why I didn't... Actually, the, no, the, you're the, noise, <laughs> the noise is one of those things. That's actually a lot of times what I will pay more attention to on a spinning mm. drive is like ones that are supposed to be quiet because I, I hate loud drives. That's yeah. a fair um, point, too. Anyway, uh, last question. We'll breeze through from another caller. Hi, Lifehacker. I was recently looking for replacement parts for my iPod on Amazon when I got an idea. Would it be cheaper to order each part needed for an iPod, such as the logic board and all, and to build it yourself, than just buying an iPod already made and working? Thanks. I love the show, guys. Keep it up. Um, well, that is a weird and interesting question. I've never <laughs> considered it, but yeah. that actually, it's, it's a cool idea. In yeah. theory, you could. I, I don't really... know if it'd be cheaper, though. Well, he, well I mean, I think the parts are pretty expensive. I'm not looking at eBay, so I don't really know. But... Yeah, but he's saying he saw them. I mean, oh, like okay. He must be asking because he saw cheaper parts. Yeah. And, and if you've and done the, the math is... and it's cheaper, it seems like a fun project just to see if you could do it. I would. Yeah. Here, here's my challenge to you. Do that project. Take right. pictures. And send it. And send, send it to it. us. I would love to. I mean, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it because I'm telling you to. But if you <laughs> choose to do it, I would be very interested in sort of like yeah. the outcome. It would be really cool to to see. So if you choose to try that out, I'm I'd love to see how that turns out. Yeah, you it's actually have a lot cool of idea. like interesting directions to take mm. with that sort of approach. Yeah, I mean, because th- like if you were building, for example, like a. Um, the old iPod Nano or an iPod Mini, that's what they're called. Yeah. You could, the, people used to hack those and put in like really big compact flashcards because it could handle those. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and so you could, you could do something like that. I don't know. I, I mean, potentially there's some options with some of the others as yeah. well. Um, It'd be pretty cool. Yeah, where you could actually make have a, a much quieter a more robust iPod. iPod that when you drop it doesn't break and can have like a ton of storage. Um, obviously, the it's main thing cool. is you won't have a warranty. Yeah. But, Come on. <laughs> we, we jail, we're all jailbreaking our phones. Say, we yeah. avoided our warranties on pretty much every piece of technology we've ever owned, so um, we life hackers do not worry about such petty things. Yeah. But yeah, I'm very curious. I, I think that would be really cool. I'm curious if you try it out. Let us know. Yeah. All right. So that's it for questions. Let's jump into the downloads. First up, we have Stat for Windows. It's a, a very old download. It's been around for a long time, but it is just always useful. If you find yourself running out of space on your hard drive, especially if you have a small SSD, for example, Windersstat will show you which folders are taking up the most space, what file types are taking up the most space, all in this really cool interface that lays it out for you in a graphical fashion. So if you're running out of space for your hard drive, this is the best way to start cleaning it up. For Mac, we have found, which is a simple but powerful little search tool that combines search results for your Mac's hard drive, Gmail, Google Drive, and Dropbox all into one search result. So if you're using a lot of different Dropbox accounts or if you have a bunch of different Google accounts, it can combine all of those into one search result so you can search everything at once and find it right away. And when you do, it pulls up a nice big clean interface so you can see big pictures, you can read full text, the whole deal. Uh, The best part is it's a free download in the Mac App Store. For Android, we finally have a native official client for Instapaper. So if you've been using Readability or Pocket up until now, you can finally check out Instapaper, which previously has been more iOS centric. The Android client uh, isn't quite as feature filled as the iPhone client yet. It's missing a few little things like friends and discovering new articles, but it's brand new. So it's bound to get those uh, features in the future. The interface is great almost exactly like what you would find on iOS or the other platforms. Um, We love it. So go check it out if you have been using Readability or Pocket and you're not in love with them. For iOS, we have an awesome app called Just Landed. Um, Everyone picked someone up at the airport at one point or another. Just Landed is a really cool app where you you open it up, you enter in the flight number of the person that you're going to pick up, and it uses real-time flight data, your current location, and traffic information to send you a notification when it's time for you to leave your house to go pick up that person from the airport. It's a simple, it just does one thing. It's really beautifully designed. It seems to work very well. It's a really cool, really clever idea. I'm way into just landed. So give it a try if you ever pick someone up from the airport. For iOS, we have Cloudy, which is basically a video sharing app, kind of like Instagram. Um, You take little video clips on your iPhone and they get stuck on there forever. 
I didn't realize until I actually used Cloudy how many videos that I had meant to post somewhere or to edit or do something with that were just sitting in my camera roll. And Cloudy makes it really easy to either take a video or to, um, or to take videos that you've already shot in the past and just upload them and it creates a nice little stream. It's currently in beta, but if you go to the post on Lifehacker that we have, you can uh, go ahead and just check out one of uh, my collections that I posted. And if you like or comment on a video, it'll let you sign up for an account. Just to be clear, if you like or comment on a video, you don't actually, it doesn't post anything to Facebook or whatever. It doesn't, it's just on my collection. So I will know what you think. And that is the worst that can happen, but you'll get an account very quickly. So definitely check it out. It's a really great, simple, easy, super, super, super simple, easy way to share your videos. All right, and that is it for this week. Thank you for joining us, You're and <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. If you'd like to ask us a question, send an email to tips plus ask LH show at lifehacker.com. Alternatively, leave us a message at 347-687-8109. Try to keep your questions to a few sentences or 30 seconds so we can keep the show moving quickly. And thanks for listening, watching, or however else you get this podcast from the internet to your brain. This episode was recorded in Los Angeles, California by the Lifehacker staff and edited into a more consumable form by Kyle J. Norris. We'd also like to thank all the people who contributed images to our podcast to help make it look extra nice. Okay, awesome. Now we yeah. can I think it's good. Like constantly. Yeah, absolutely. Are we being too loud? Just got some new fans for my computer, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, where'd we leave off?